The meeting scheduled for April 27 between South Korean President Moon Jae-in and North Korea's leader Kim Jong-un, is providing a sense of optimism on the Korean peninsula. However, for many families of Japanese nationals abducted by North Korean spies, this sudden outbreak of diplomacy has not given rise to hope that their loved ones will be sent home anytime soon. North Korea, prisoner issue looms large after Mike Pompeo's secret trip the summit between the North and South, as well as the proposed meeting between Kim and U.S. President Donald Trump, may well lead to a breakthrough on the question of the North's nuclear weapons and ballistic missile programs. This may also lead to Pyongyang building better relations with its neighbors in the region and being welcomed back into the international community. Amid these expectations, however, the issue of North Korea's deplorable human rights record seems to have been put on the back burner. And in Japan, the relatives of Japanese abductees are being reminded of this development as the world focuses on high-wire diplomacy. There are concerns that diplomacy with the Kim regime will ignore its dismal human rights record over 40 years missing the last time that Noriko Furukawa's family heard from her was during a brief phone call on the morning of July 7, 1973. Furukawa called to say that she had reached Shibo Station, east of Tokyo. Then, for the next 25 years, there was nothing but silence. It was only in 1998, when North Korean agent in Myang Jin, who had defected to the South, described in a book how he saw Furukawa and two other missing Japanese nationals at Hospital 915 in Pyongyang, that the family had a more concrete idea of what happened to her. At some point on that day in 1973, Furukawa had reportedly been seized by North Korean agents and was surreptitiously taken to Pyongyang in order to train a new generation of the regime spies before they would be infiltrated back into Japan. Her 73-year-old sister, Tamaji Takashita, still lives in Shiba City and says that she has seen nothing to suggest that the Japanese thought to be missing in North Korea will be coming home soon. Read more, after Kim Shi meeting, a be eager to advance Japan's interests, I do not think the two meetings will be effective in rescuing the abductees, she told DW. Kim has made no mention of human rights issues, even though there are many foreigners who have been abducted and who are still in the North. It is clear that he does not want to discuss the topic, so I can only be pessimistic, she added. Takashida is also critical of President Moon for playing down the abductions, even though there may be as many as 1,000 South Korean nationals who are still being held against their will in the North. In contrast to Japanese abductees, however, the vast majority of South Korean abductees were fishermen whose boats strayed too close to the North before their crews were captured. But these detainees have also not been permitted to return to their homes, support groups for the Japanese relatives of abductees say. Moon only seems to want to have positive outcomes from these talks, such as reconciliation between the North and South and, eventually, reunification. Read more, Japan, ghost ships, drifting from desperate North Korea missing since 1978 Shigeo Izuka, whose younger sister, Iako Taguchi, was abducted in 1978, is similarly pessimistic about the outcomes of the leaders talks. I do not know what is on the agenda for their meetings, but my suspicion is that there will be nothing about the Japanese victims of North Korean abductions, he told DW. I worry that the North's nuclear weapons will be the primary area of discussion and the abductions will be overlooked or, at least, not dealt with as much as we have been hoping. After she was abducted, Iako Taguchi is reported to have been forced to train a number of North Korean agents, including Kim hyun wei a former spy who was responsible for planting a bomb on a Korean air flight in 1987, killing 115 people. Kim revealed to officials that Iako Taguchi was alive after she was arrested for downing the aircraft. Despite Kim's confession, North Korea continues to deny any involvement in the atrocity and Shigeo Izuka fears that releasing his sister would mean that Pyongyang's lies would finally be confirmed. Yoichi Shimada, who serves as the vice chairman of the National Association for the Rescue of Japanese Kidnapped by North Korea, admits that a sense of pessimism has descended on the families in recent weeks. Their hopes had been raised earlier in the year when Kim Jong-un first suggested he would be open to talks with the international community. In 2016, U.S. student Otto Warmbier was arrested for allegedly stealing a propaganda poster as a trophy. He was sentenced to 15 years of hard labor for crimes against the state. In June 2017, he was returned by North Korea to the U.S. in a coma and died a week later. What happened to him in captivity is a mystery. His death prompted a travel ban for U.S. citizens to North Korea.
Kim Dong-chul, a South Korea-born U.S. citizen, was sentenced in 2015 to 10 years hard labor for subversion and espionage after North Korean officials said he received a USB stick containing nuclear-linked and military secrets from a South Korean source in North Korea. Chul was arrested in the Special Economic Zone Resin while visiting. He remains imprisoned and his condition is unknown. In 2013, North Korea sentenced U.S. citizen Kenneth Bay to 15 years hard labor for crimes against the state. He was arrested with a tour group in the port city of Razin. A North Korean court described Bay as a militant Christian evangelist. He was allowed to talk to the media once, and said he was forced to work eight hours a day and was in poor health. Bay was released in November 2014. In 2013, U.S. citizen Matthew Miller was arrested when he arrived in Pyongyang and reportedly tore up his U.S. passport demanding asylum in North Korea. He was later sentenced to six years of hard labor on charges of espionage. The court said Miller had wild ambition to experience prison life so that he could secretly investigate North Korea's human rights situation. He was released in 2014. In 2013, Merrill Newman, an 85-year-old Korean War U.S. Army veteran, was detained for one month in North Korea. Arrested as he was departing, he was accused of masterminding espionage and subversive activities. He was freed after he expressed sincere repentance and read a statement that said he was guilty of a long list of indelible crimes against the DPRK government and Korean people. U.S. journalists Yuna Lee and Laura Ling were captured in 2009 after briefly entering North Korea to report on refugees. After a month in confinement, they were sentenced to 12 years hard labor for illegal entry and hostile acts. Two months later, after former U.S. President Bill Clinton met with former North Korean leader Kim Jong-il in Pyongyang, the two women were pardoned and freed. Author, Wesley ran the threat of secret agents. There is a sense that the leaders are shelving the abduction issue in order to reach an agreement on nuclear weapons. Shimada told DW. The families fear that Moon or Kim might choose to ignore human rights in the rush to solve the nuclear problem and that any agreement that leaves the Kim regime in control in the North leaves us with little leverage. Shinzo Abe, the Japanese Prime Minister, held talks in Florida this week with Trump and confirmed that he had convinced the president to include the fate of the abductees in his discussions with Kim, although there are no guarantees that will happen, Shimada admitted. But he insists it should be a concern of the U.S. as well as Japan. The North wanted these Japanese to train their spies so that they can be infiltrated back into Japan, where they will look like Japanese people until they emerge as saboteurs should a conflict break out on the Korean Peninsula, he said. At that point, their mission is to attack U.S. military bases here in Japan to disrupt the U.S. If the U.S. can convince the North to release the Japanese, then they will be able to identify some of those agents here in Japan, he added. As long as this issue of the abductions remains unsolved, the U.S. bases and personnel here remain under threat.